So what's the first thing you need to do? Show your enthusiasm. First impressions are critical. Thank the person who introduced you. Address him or her by name. So that's the way you start off. The next thing, you see a lot of this going on, right? Gripping the podium. Or if you're giving it to your uh, fellow students, th what I'm telling you today is anybody, any place, students, in the public, when you're presenting to firefighters, when you're going to the International Firefighters Association meeting, don't grip the podium because then you're rigid and flexible and you're not reaching out to your audience. So let go of the podium. Now, this is the one uh, that I find important. The next one, don't jingle your change in your pocket or your keys. If you have your hands in your pocket jingling, people are wondering, what's going on in that pocket, right? So, so keep your hands out of your pocket. Don't jingle. Take the change out. Take your keys out. And this I've seen more with uh, men than women, probably. Uh, don't read your paper. Memorize at least your first three slides and your take-home message. You should always have a take-home message. And of course, don't use ah, uh, ah, uh, you know. It, it's so part of us that we don't even know we're saying it. Avoid those terms and practice and let somebody else listen to you to hear what you're saying. If you're saying, uh, you know, don't do use your hands for emphasis. So if you say, I have three points, I have three points I want to get across to you. The first is, the second is, the third is. So gesture, be free and fluid with your talk. Okay, the first. Have you, if you were watching the presidential elections the other night, and who wasn't, um, you would see um, Hillary, for example, always does this for emphasis. You know, she, she makes, she doesn't stand there rigid at the podium. She is reaching out to her audience. She's reaching out to the TV. And, uh, and Donald Trump has a different movement, more like this. <laughs> But, but I, I think I'm a little more controlled movement is probably a little better. Um, do visualize your study. Don't get up there like, like you're giving a rote talk and you're not seeing the firefighters. For example, when I was giving a talk about the firefighters, I saw them. I saw the study. I mean, I was doing a meta-analysis, so I really didn't see anything. But computers, but I could see the firefighters I had talked to afterwards about the study. So try to, try to really visualize. Next, don't randomly scan the room like this, you know, like you're trying to deal with your anxiety so you're, you're looking like this so you don't see anybody. No, that's not a good idea. Do focus on three people in the room, one on your left, one in the middle, and then one on your right. Then halfway through the talk, find three new people, one on the left, <laughs> one in the center, and one on the right. And they feel a part of your talk. So none of this, I'm only going to look at the foreheads. Everybody's going to go into a blur for me so I don't feel stressed. No, look at them. And so they know that you are talking to them. Um, uh, this is another thing that just makes me crazy, is using a light pointer like a whirly bird. Don't you see people go around and around? Instead of flashing right on the point, they're going around and around. And for me, I get easily motion sick. So I have to shut my eyes. I can't take this whirly bird effect. So one light on your point, not this. That doesn't help. Um, do speak slowly, distinctively, and with passion. Show some energy. 
if you don't have any energy for your talk and you're coming across like deadpan, you know, this is, I'm going to tell you how to give a talk today and some pointers for this. What does that do to you? It just shuts you down, right? You just go somewhere else in your head. So if you want your audience to be enthusiastic about what you're saying, you need to be enthusiastic, right? Um, uh, do gesture, punctuate, include the audience, reach for them. Gesture to someone in the audience, like uh, you saw Dr. Haynes throwing the ball out there. So, so if you're gesturing, you think I'm including you, right? Or you. And so uh, you can find ways to gesture, like, well, this may seem very complex or complicated, but here's how we can think of it simply. That's a gesture. Don't leave your hands rigid, frozen. You're always moving. You're always including. And you are looking like you are on top of your game, right? You are on top of your game because after going through this program, we have taught you how to be on top of your game. Okay, another thing. Don't sway. Do you see people giving talks that are doing this? Are you one of those? Anybody sway? Okay, we got some swayers. How do you stop that swaying? You put one foot in front of the other when you're giving your talk, and you really can't sway. You're, you're sort of stuck. Always keep one foot or the other in front of you. It, 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 it keeps you from that swaying motion. You know, swaying is a soothing feeling, right? That's why people sway. They're soothing themselves. This is not the place to soothe yourself. Find someplace else. Okay. Do practice, practice, practice. Exaggerate during your practice. If I am saying to you, I have three points I want to talk to, you'd say, I have three points I want to talk to you. The first, because by the time you get up in front of the room, you're going to go, I have three points to talk to you today. <laughs> One, two. So if you're exaggerating during your practice, then you, you'll still get there. Not quite the same way, but you'll get there. So, uh, and this is important, again, for all groups, because everybody can go to sleep on you. <laughs> Uh, okay. Do use conversational speech. Don't do use con uh, contractions except when emphasizing. Modulate your voice up, down, intonation, and emotional intensity. Get excited, right? Get excited about what you're talking about. So if you're talking about one of your research that you spent the last three years on, someone should be excited, and that should be you, so you can excite your audience. So modulate your voice. Sometimes it comes down. You're going along, and then all of a sudden you want to point, and you want to make a strong point, and, and you say, you should know. You should know. Right? And that... All of a sudden, I have to know something. I didn't know I was going to have to know something. So modulate there. And uh, do smile uh, when you're being introduced as you begin your speech, whenever possible, during and at the end of the talk, and if appropriate, use humor where you can. If you're smiling, right? The whole world smiles. No, if you're smiling, you look cool and confident, right? You say, oh, thank you, Dr. Haynes, for introducing me today. It's my pleasure to be with you. So you can smile at that point and at the end. And I thank you for your attention today at this talk. You can smile then. Smiling engages people and it makes you look very confident. You're not saying, thank you, Dr. Haynes, for this opportunity to speak. 
you know, you're saying, oh, thanks, Dr. Hayes. Do control your audience during question and answer, and this one is very important. Keep order, be fair, and don't let one person dominate your talk. So sometimes you're at a conference and somebody's coming up there and they have a question. Okay, so you answer. Then they have another question. When that's happening, you want to be looking around the room for another question over here. <laughs> and you say, thank you for that question, but I would like to give somebody else an opportunity over here <laughs> to give a talk. Sometimes people are just rude, may give you a rude question, particularly us faculty when the students are presenting, we might say something rude. So then you say to us, well, that's an interesting point, I'll look into that, but obviously we, you and I have differences of opinion. Now, I wouldn't say that to your faculty member, but, <laughs> but, but I might say that at a conference, right? If they're saying, well, this has been done before, there's nothing new about this research, I don't even agree with your findings. Rather than saying, going sheet white, freezing, do not, do not let that stand. Do not let something obnoxious like that stand. You say, well, you have a right to your opinion. Obviously, I have found some different results and have a different uh, response to to your issue and I think it's highly interesting as I've pointed out or something to that but expect you know be ready expect somebody to say something out of the blue nine out of ten times it will not happen but you want to be ready for that one time and with that do anticipate questions and answers it's your talk but be prepared. Don't just go in there and say, Bleh, I wonder what they're going to ask me. No. If you were listening to you, I mean, it's anxiety provoking, right? Well, what makes you anxious about giving a talk? Anybody? Ball? It's out there. Being watched. Having people in front of you. But you've picked friends then. You've picked your person on the left, your person in the middle and your person on the right. And then you've switched around. You've already engaged them. You're giving them eye contact. They're feeling important. So you have friends out there. What else makes you anxious? Questions from the audience. From the audience. Well, easy way to deal with that. You should know what those questions are going to be. You know more about your study than anybody else. You can have backup slides ready to answer those questions also, right? But Work through those questions. Write those questions out. Don't say, I wonder what they're going to ask me. If you don't know what they're going to ask you, and you know your data better than anybody, then Houston, we have a problem, right? You don't want to go in there not anticipating the questions. Write them out. Have an answer ready. Do communicate with simple illustration tables or figures. If you have to apologize for a slide, I apologize for that spelling, uh, <laughs> do it over. Audience will wonder if you're lazy. The worst thing for me to see is someone that comes out and, and says, well, I'm sorry about this slide. I know you probably can't see it. Duh. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Make it so everyone can read it. Otherwise, I think and I did at this last meeting I went to at the International Society for Environmental Epidemiology. Someone said that, and I could have strangled them. I said, I'm in the second row, and I can't read it. <laughs> so do it over. Do it better, and make sure that people in the back of the room can read it. Uh, oh, and you have seen this, I'm sure. People have their talks stapled together, and their going like this, right? Don't ever flip pages. Very distracting. If you have notes, you just slide like this. You just slide. Easy done. Don't flip, slide. Okay? Um, do stay within your time limit. 
the audience will love you. Some of us today did not stay within our time limit, and the third speaker is not happy. But, but we have till 1.30, so I guess we're more or less cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and then dress well. First impressions persist. Dress well. Dress what makes you feel good, you know? I like these black boots, so I put these black boots on because they made me feel good, you know? I give me a little height. I don't look like a five-foot-two little person. I got a little height up here. So when you go to give a talk, dress in something that you're going to feel confident in. You know, you know those outfits. Some just look terrible on you, right? You don't want to wear that. Look good. And if you get blotchy, wear high neck. See this nice high neck? I used to get blotchy, but I still wear high neck just in case. You know, you never know. A blotch might occur, and then it just blows my whole confidence. Okay. <laughs> Always acknowledge the work by others. And sometimes you should do that in the beginning. Do not run out of time and not acknowledge your colleagues. That is the worst thing in the world that will never be forgotten. And so always acknowledge the work by others. Avoid too much of this flying, flashing, shimmering objects or words. It often backfires. Maybe one key item which is really important that you want to have come flashing in, but for the most part, avoid too much of this high-tech movement. It detracts from the audience and detracts on your message. And finally, and the most important, I always have told my students this, don't let the shark smell blood. That's your take-home message. Show confidence. Don't start when you give a talk to your fellow students, let's say, in seminar. I'm feeling really nervous today. No, no, never, never let that leave your lips. Not, I'm feeling really nervous today. I, I'm, 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 I'm really worried. No, you are confident. You know this stuff. Don't let the sharks, even if it's your fellow students, smell blood. And particularly at meetings, you come out there, you're smiling, you're thanking Dr. Haynes for introducing you. You are ready to go, and you know this material, and you have done this research for two or three years, and you're proud of it. And here's your chance to shine on.